attention is a hot research area in deep learning. It is inspired by human brain function and it is a powerful mechanism. Here we are going to explore how to add attention in our deep neural network. In this way, it is possible to enhance performance and also provide local explanations for the deep neural network decisions. In the context of neural networks, attention is a technique that mimics brain function and perception. The effect enhances the important parts of the input data and fades out the rest. Consider, for example, the scenario that you attend a talk. It is quite likely that you will focus on the speaker and you will ignore the surroundings. In other words, we tend to selectively concentrate on a part of the information when and where it is needed, and we ignore a large amount of information at the same time. In this particular example, we're not going to observe the whole scene, but instead observe and pay attention just to specific parts. And this applies to all our senses. This is a means for us to quickly select high value information from massive information using limited processing resources. Here we see that our attention in human is driven by two mechanisms, a bottom-up attention which is an unconscious attention called also saliency based attention and is driven by external stimuli. We saw that deep neural networks up to a point, they display this property by detecting saliency features. Remember, for example, convolutional neural networks. Humans also depend on top down conscious attention, also called focused attention. Focused attention refers to the attention that has a predetermined purpose and relies on a specific task. It enables humans to focus attention on a specific object consciously. Attention is very important because in the case of limited computing power, it can process more important information with limited computational resources. Here we're going to see how we can build attention in recurrent neural networks. We see here a standard recurrent layer that we have discussed before. Based on these layers, given a sequence, for example, of previous words, we can predict the next. So here as an input, we can see we have the vector x1, x2, x3, and xn. It is fed to the layer one step at a time, and this updates the hidden states each time, which here are denoted with h. The input sequence is the embedding of the input words, for example, or ECG signal, or the hidden state from the previous layer. The output of the recurrent layer is a vector with the same length as the number of units in the recursive neural network layer. This can be fed to a dense layer with a soft max output to predict the distribution for the next node or the next word or the next ECG bit, for example, in the sequence we are observing. Here we're going to see an example of how to build attention in recurrent neural networks. So we see a standard recurrent layer and we see the hidden states h1, h2, h3, and hn. These are a vector of length equal to the number of units in the recurrent layer, 
and they are passed through a tense layer, typically, also called an alignment function to generate E. E is a normalization step in terms of our hidden layers, and typically is combined with a hyperbolic tangent function. Subsequently, the soft max function is applied to the vector E to produce the vector of weights A, which are also called important score or attention scores. A, in other words, is a learnable function and it reflects the importance of hidden state HJ to the next hidden state. AJ is the amount of attention that, a, that the ith output should pay on the input. Also, we can see that the hidden layer, each of the hidden layers, are multiplied with its respective weight alpha, and the results are sum to give the context vector. So the context vector has same length as the hidden state vector. The context vector represents a relationship between the current output and each term of the entire input sequence. This is passed to a dense layer typically, which is a softmax layer and usually it outputs a distribution of the potential next, let's say, state or word. So we saw here that the tension mechanism is powerful and it helps the network decide which previous states of the recurrent layer are important for predicting the next step in a sequence. And coder-decoder architectures are very powerful in deep learning, and for this reason, they have been used in several applications, including natural language processing, computer vision, and healthcare informatics. Here we're going to see how to build attention into an encoder-decoder network. In particular, we're going to see a, recur a recur recurrent neural network encoder and decoder. The attention layer, as we see here, is placed after the encoder. The architecture, as you see, is very similar to what, to what we have seen previously, with one key difference. The hidden state of the decoder is also involved into the mechanism of attention. So the model is able to decide where to focus, not only through the previous encoder hidden states, but also with the current decoder hidden state. There are many copies of the attention mechanism within the encoder-decoder network, but they all share the same weights. So there is no extra overhead in the number of parameters to be learned. Here we see that the context vector C is concatenated with the incoming data Y to form an extended vector of data into each cell of the decoder. Thus, we treat the context vector as additional data to be fed into the decoder. There is extensive research on how to improve attention mechanisms. Here we see a generalized model of attention based on a recent review article. In attention network, we first encode the source data features as K, also called keys. Keys can be expressed in various representation according to specific tasks and neural architectures. 
Keys here represent different areas of an image word embedding, or as we saw in, a, in our previous recurrent neural network example, they represent hidden states of the network. Usually, we also need a task-related representation, which we call the query. Just like the previous hidden state of the output. Then the neural network computes a correlation between queries and keys through a score function f, which is called the energy function. And in this way, it estimates the en energy scores that reflect the importance of queries with respect to keys in deciding the next output. Therefore, queries are a set of vectors to calculate attention for, whereas keys is a set of vectors to calculate attention against. The score function f is a crucial part of the attention model because it defines how keys and queries are matched or combined. We've seen before the f function, which was equivalent to the alignment function, which was represented based on a dense layer and a tangent hyperbolic function. There are less computationally expensive ways of performing this attention mechanism through, for example, a dot product. The distribution function G corresponds to the softmax layer that we've seen earlier in our recurrent neural network. And it is used to normalize all the energy scores to a probability distribution. There are several J functions explored by researchers. Att because attention distribution function has a great influence on the computational complexity of the whole attention model. Attention mechanism is a significant breakthrough in deep learning and they have been exploited to improve the performance of deep neural networks significantly. They are still under intensive investigation and several of their mechanisms, they can be adjusted in several aspects, such as the score function or the distribution function, or the combination of values and attention weights and the network architecture. As we're going to see in subsequent videos, attention can also be exploited to provide human understandable explanations.